Hey everybody and welcome to this A plus 1201 performance based question. We're going to get straight to it today. The performance based question today is going to be matching the printer components with the correct printer. And as a little twist, you may only use each component once. Let's go ahead and take a look. Before we actually get to it though, I'll just remind you that you can find this performance based question as a download in the description of this video. I highly recommend you actually go ahead and attempt it. Download it 100% for free. It'll just give you a free Google uh, Google Slides version of this performance-based question that you can download. Try for free. If you try it before watching my walkthrough, your learning will be so much more, guys. Your brain will have to work so much more. So give that a crack. That being said, let's get straight to it. Okay, so here's what we're working with. We can only use each of these one time, all right? Only one time. So we have a laser printer, an inkjet printer, an impact printer, and a thermal printer. Each of these have three slots. Let's do some quick math, guys, to avoid getting freaked out later. Three slots each, three, six, nine, 12. Okay, how many options do we have to choose from? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that means some of these will go unfilled. So if you see an unfilled slot, don't panic. Now, let's go ahead and start making our way through this performance-based question, okay? We're gonna have to recognize which components go with which particular type of printer. Let's start with some of what I would classify the easiest ones. In situations like this, it's always best to start with the easiest ones, all right? Let's go down until we see something that really sticks out to us. This one to me, very, very clear, heat sensitive paper. Where should we be putting the heat sensitive paper? Pause the video if you haven't already completed it through the download, which I'm sure you have, but pause it and think about it. Heat sensitive paper, we're gonna go ahead and put that in the thermal printer, guys. Remember, thermal printers are generally the printers that are used to produce receipts. And those receipts are printed on heat sensitive paper because they are specifically uh, exposed sorry, to heat. And when exposed to that heat, that paper will turn black at that exact point where it has been exposed to that heat. It is heat sensitive paper. They're very quick, they're very quiet, and they are used to generally print receipts, okay? That is thermal printers use heat sensitive paper. Hopefully we should know that, right? Hopefully we should have already gone through all the course content. We should have already gone through the entire learning guide before we're doing this. So we should have hopefully got that one. Now let's go ahead and see if something else sticks out to us. We have a ribbon that may stick out to you. I'm gonna leave it for now, but that may stick out to you. We have a fuser assembly. This one, guys, hopefully alarm bells are ringing. A fuser assembly. Is a fuser assembly in a thermal, impact, inkjet, or laser printer? Fuser assembly. I'm about to move it. So if you haven't already tried, give it a crack now, pause the video, here we go. Remember, a fuser assembly is the one that uses heat to fuse toner to the paper. Which printer uses a fuser assembly? It is going to be our laser printer, guys. It is going to be our laser printer, all right? The laser printer has that toner transferred onto the page, and then the page is run through the fuser assembly, which actually um, fuses that toner, which is like the liquid kind of ink, right? The powdered ink fuses that toner to the paper. That's what the fuser assembly does. In a laser printer, the fuser assembly fuses the toner to the paper once it has been applied, okay? What about the next one? Hmm. Ink cartridge. Which one of these uses an ink cartridge? Hmm. There's only one, guys. There's only one. You might think, hey, it's a printer. They all use ink, right? Well, no, we've just established laser printers use toner. We know thermal printers don't even use any ink because they use heat sensitive paper. And I'll give you a hint, guys. Impact printers don't use an ink cartridge either. They do use ink, but not an ink cartridge. So that leaves the inkjet printer, right? It's even in the name. Inkjet printer uses the ink cartridge, okay? So that is a key component. The ink cartridge is only used in the inkjet printer, which leaves us asking, okay, but then if a laser printer uses toner, which fills this one out for us, doesn't it? We know a laser printer uses toner. If you see the word toner, it is laser printer. So if a laser printer uses toner, 
If an inkjet uses ink cartridges, if a thermal printer uses heat-sensitive paper, what on earth does an impact printer use? Well, we know they use ink, but that ink isn't necessarily coming directly from the ink cartridge. It is coming from the ribbon. Remember, they have the, the ribbon, which is filled with ink, and upon impact, that ink is pressed through the ribbon onto the paper which is how that ink is actually transferred. So the ribbon is full of ink, okay, in the impact printer. Next one, guys, the imaging drum. Hopefully, the imaging drum, if we've done our studies on our printers, it should be sticking out to us. The imaging drum only belongs to one of these printers. We're gonna find out what it is in three, two. Please pause the video if you haven't already and you haven't downloaded it, and you haven't already tried it on your own, which I'm sure you have, it belongs to the laser printer, guys. The laser printer has the imaging drum. Now, the imaging drum is that component of the printer that uh, it is negatively charged, and then the laser will draw a positive charge onto the imaging drum, and then the toner will stick to where that positive charge has taken place, and then the, that toner is applied to the paper in that particular pattern, which then goes through the fuser assembly, all right? I'm not going too into detail with this particular video, guys, because one, I've gone through this in my whole course, which you can access on my YouTube channel, and uh, two, it's all in the learning guide as well, okay? So this isn't so much of a lesson as it is just an opportunity for you to test yourself for free, okay? Now, the inkjet printer still has two missing components. The impact printer has two and the thermal printer has two, but we've only got three. So we'll have to be pretty particular with how we go about um, these answers because we know we're gonna be missing a couple. Let's go ahead and start with the tractor feed. The tractor feed, can we think where that might go? You got it. Always feeling like Dora the Explorer talking to myself over here, but you are absolutely 100% correct. The tractor feed is in the impact printer. Guys, the tractor feed is essentially what moves that specific type of paper that you get in an impact printer. You get the specific type of paper that has perforated edges, which is what that tractor feed grabs onto to drag that paper through. Okay, so you can you can Google Google image that have a look at the learning guide, right? If you need more information on that, but the tractor feed is for impact printers. It is specifically used for paper that has perforated edges, which is that specific type of edges on the paper that has those holes in it, right? It grabs onto those and uses that to drag it through. The next one, multi-part paper. We've only got two left, guys. Multi-part paper. Hmm, what could that be? Well. Multi-part paper refers to paper that comes in multiple parts. In essence, what you're doing is you're getting about two to three printouts from the same stamping motion onto that piece, those pieces of paper, because it is such a strong motion that it's actually going through and printing onto the pages underneath that first piece of paper. So you're getting two to three copies, often in different colors, Hopefully alarm bells should be ringing by now if you've done your studies and we should know we're talking about an impact printer, guys. Multi-part paper is used in the impact printer, all right, which only leaves one. It leaves our carriage belt. Now our carriage belt, pause the video if you need time before we do it. The carriage belt is used to take ink cartridges and transfer them horizontally across the paper, making sure the correct color is given at the correct time in the correct location. And which printer uses ink cartridges? That is inkjet printers, guys. So that is hopefully what our final output of our performance-based question should look like. If so long as they're in the right printer, that's all that matters. If you accidentally put like multi-part paper here and um, track to feed like underneath. Don't worry too much about that. So long as they're in the right section, that's all that matters. Give yourself one point for each, see how you went. If this was easy for you, then that's a good sign. You're probably ready to tackle the components of printers on your exam. Not necessarily the troubleshooting, but just the components of printers. Uh, if it was a little bit difficult, go back uh, and you know, you should have a document, like this is my necessary time where I have to plug it, guys. You should have a document that looks like this, where you can actually go, hey, you know what? We're gonna come down to learning uh, exam director 3.8, which is gonna bring us to printers, and it's gonna break it down into the individual types of printers, and it's gonna tell me the exact different components, what they do, how they work. 
right? You should have a document that allows you to do that. So that way you don't have to go back and fast forward and rewind and take notes on a video. It's all here in one place. And ideally that same document should also have multiple choice questions for you to actually practice applying that knowledge in the same way you will be needed to on the exam. Okay. So if you want to get a document like that, this is where my plug comes in guys. You can go ahead and go to journey to cyber.com uh, or click the link in the description or in the pinned comment below where you can get my learning guide. It has notes and practice questions broken down by exam objective, just like I said, you're going to need there. It has 11 performance based questions for you to use. It has three practice exams where I take all those practice questions and performance based questions and put them into a randomized practice exam format. And it also has a tracking spreadsheet for you to use with my recommended study schedule. And it has a video where I show you how to study properly with multiple choice questions. And it has a video where I show you how to use free AI tools, how to 10 times your learning specific to the A plus 1201 exam. And it has another video where I show you how to ace specifically multiple choice questions, so even some more hints, tips, and tricks. So people are saying uh, that they've paid for my previous stuff and it's helped them pass uh, and they'd be more than happy to pay for my future stuff. This guy's saying that um, it helps him piece together things more easily because of how organized it is. This guy's saying that he downloaded it and can already see that it will help immensely with studying. All right, he's tried other popular resources but struggled absorbing the material. I know I had that same problem myself when I was studying, which is what motivated me to make these resources myself. So if you want to get it, you can click there if you've downloaded the performance based question, or you can go to the link in my description or in my pinned comment below, guys. But uh, hey, you don't need it. If you don't want it, I'm going to keep putting out these free resources for 100% free. So just stick around, stay subscribed, and you'll have another one coming at you soon. All right. See you guys. Enjoy.